right. According to the standards. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. That's the thing. You're right. It's frustrating. So we're going to talk about my chickens instead. Okay. Because this will settle us down a little bit. <laughs> so what I want to talk about. I want to start. Trevor asked an amazing question right before the break. I don't know if you heard it or not. He asked the question. He's like, okay, I'm with you. I don't know if you said that, actually. I'm with you, but what I want to know is, how did you get the numbers in the probability column? The question was, where did the 0.58 come from? The 0.343, the one that Haley gave to me when I asked to, to get, and it's a great question. We used an Excel simulation to generate that. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, that's a great thing. But this is one of those lines where you have to cross back into to actually understand where those numbers came from. So I think the best way to introduce this is talking about my flock of chickens. Nancy, Mary, Bertha, and Marge, named after our grandmothers. My grandmothers and my, and my wife's grandmothers. So Mary the Delaware, and uh, Bertha the uh, Plymouth Bard Rock, or my grandmoms, and Nancy the Orpington, and Marge the Americana are my wife's grandmothers. So the question is, when you, well, I, the question is, are they all, this is when they were, they were a day old or two days old at this point. My, my leg, they're pooping on my leg, I'm sure, seconds later. So here's what I was told when I walked in the store. So I, I walk in the store, and there's these bins of chickens, like these huge bins with hundreds of birds in them. It's just adorable. Have you ever been to the, the, oh the you, I know you have, Elena. Some of you have been to the feed stores. I so have a bin as well. Yeah, right, but you walk in the store, though, and there's just hundreds of these yeah. things in the store, and they're yeah. all chirping. And they're like all different kinds. And they're all different kinds, and colors of ducks in there, and turkeys in there. And I go in there, I'm like, so these things are how old? They said they're a day old. I'm like, how the hell can you tell? And they're called pullets. Pullets are the girl chicks. Yeah. I say, how do you tell? That they're girls. He's like, well, they're not guaranteed to be girls. I said, okay. So he says pullet. Well, well, well what, what can you say? And what, what the guy told me at the store was, the chance that a pullet is actually female is about 90%. That's what he, that's what he said. I said, well, how, how do you tell? How do you tell that, that, that they're, they're females? You tell you how we'll, we'll lift you their tell? skirt? Yes. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Basically, there's a sexing operation. Yes. That's sex, a, sexing, a sexing visual thing they do that's 90% accurate. So I guess... What I want to talk about is my, my little bit of trepidation walking into the store and buying four chicks, knowing that I live in a neighborhood with other neighbors, and worrying about potentially getting a rooster, rooster which is going to make it all. Now, the girls make a lot of noise as it is, yeah. but the rooster's going to make even more noise. So here's, I go, Max, here's a little box. They give us a little, little tiny like Happy Meal box. They put the chicks in, which is adorable. They cost like a dollar and a half each. It's absolutely adorable. Max, go pick four. These are the four he picked. He picked, he picked these four, he picked one of each. I thought it was great that he picked four different ones. He had to tell them apart now in the, in the, and they lay different, slightly different colored eggs. Marge lays like this greenish, bluish one, which is great. Mary's is kind of a light brown. They're all brown except for Marge's, which is green, but they're all slightly different. So you can tell who laid which egg, which is great. Oh, Marge isn't laying right now. What's, what's up, is she molting? Oh, she's molting, it's all good. So anyway, anyway, here's the questions I had, and we're gonna address these one at a time. Think back to your last project, which I was hoping to get back to you guys today, but I said I haven't gotten back yet. Does this represent independent or dependent sampling? Which means, which means, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of these chicks in this store. And Max goes in to grab a chick. What's the chance the one he grabs is actually a girl? 90 percent. Well, it's 90 percent. He's one in 500 of the, that he's going to get that particular chick. Yeah, like, what's the chance that chick is a girl? 90 percent. According to this guy, right? This guy told me. This guy told me that there's a 90% chance that that chick's a girl. So he takes, let's say he picked up Mary first, I can't remember, he puts her in the box. And then he goes back in. What's the chance the next one is a girl? I hear a vote for the same, still 90%. So you guys are claiming that this is independent sampling. And I agree with you. I think we can call it independent sampling. But isn't it really dependent sampling? Isn't it really, Jen? <laughs> Say that nice and loud, Jen, so the YouTube community can hear uh, the brilliance of what you just said. Please. The sample's so big, it doesn't matter. You're drawing from hundreds, if not thousands, of chicks. So when we first go in, this is great. This is your last project. This is Max and the Pumpkin Seeds. Mm -hmm. This is Max and the Pumpkin Seeds, right? I'm sorry, I keep using Max, but he just gives me all these great, this great stuff to work with. You're going in and grabbing a chick, and you're pulling it out. It's 90% a girl. You've removed one tiny one thousandth of the overall population you're drawing from, which means when you go back in, sure, sure, maybe it was 900 out of 1,000 originally, 
and now it's 899 out of 999, but as Jen just said, that's arguably 90%. If I were buying all of the chicks, then it'd be a different story. But I sent them in to get four, just four. So arguably, even though it really is dependent sampling, just like in your last project, we can treat it as independent sampling. We can treat it as independent sampling. Is that fair? That's a big deal, and we'll see why momentarily. We'll see my momentarily. Okay. So here's what I'm interested in. What's the chance that all four of those hens are actually hens? What do you think? Ballpark, gut. What do you think the chance is that they're all girls? Give me a ballpark. What do you think? 90%. 90%. It's not that high, believe it or not. It can't be that high, but it's not that high. No. What do you think, Haley? Give me, give me a number. 50. A little bit better than that. Better than 50, less than 90. Go ahead, give, give me a guess. 68%. 60, damn close. Almost perfect, actually. Almost perfect. This is what I was able to do using the answer to the question Trevor asked. As soon as the guy told me that there's a 90% chance that any one chick is a girl, I said, you're telling me there's a one in three chance I got a rooster in this box? And he shook his head. He's like, how the hell do you know that? I'm like, well, I'm diseased. <laughs> but as soon as he told me, there's a 90% chance of a girl. And as soon as I realized we're only pulling four out of these thousands of birds, I knew right away the chance that they were all girls is 0.9 to the fourth power. And I can't do that in my head, but I can do 0.9 times 0.9 is roughly uh, 0.8. And 0.8 times 0.8 is roughly 0.64, which is just about two thirds. So there's a one third, that's a chance that they're all girls. So the other one third has to include a boy in it somewhere. Jada? Well, I'm just going to say, well, my dad did this. He got two little chicks, and we didn't know that one could be a boy. Exactly, it and it was. So, yeah, and then it grew up, it like, developed so much faster, and it got huge, and then it got, and it just, Got its like, gobbles, whatever they're it called. Was, like, <laughs> crowing or whatever in the morning. Squabbles, gobbles. And then it became really aggressive. And Dude, and they have those crazy-ass spurs on the back of their feet that would really rip you a new one. Yeah, yeah and they're, they're, yeah, you don't think, yeah, they, they get very, very protective of their, of their The Chinese heads. method is the best one. That's what I use. Of sexing? Yep. Don't worry about that. I don't want. I don't want a better method. No, 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 no. Just, just I want to use the ninety percent method. It's for life. I don't. I want to use ninety percent because I want yeah, you yeah. guys to understand how I walk into that store sure, sure, yeah. and surprise that guy and said, "There's a one in three chance I got a rooster." Blew his mind. And I gave him basically a diluted version we're going to talk about today and and when. But so they happen so, all to be girls. Well, I got all girls. Yes, okay. I did get all girls, mm -hmm. which is the most likely outcome for four chicks yeah. in a flock. But. The computation of the number is what Trevor asked about. So there's some other questions. What's the chance they're all boys, for that matter? The same. What's it? No, no, no. no. What's the chance that Max grabbed all boys? Oh, 10 out uh, 10 percent. If we take about like that's one bird. That's one bird, right? We have to apply the four birds. This is what the whole the whole day is about. Don't write this stuff down, friends. I'm going through. We're going to answer all these questions as we go. Okay. So what's the chance you get one in three? What's the chance? What's the average number of of, of girls you would expect? What's the average number of girls per four birds? What's the average number per four? These are all questions we're going to answer in line as we go through today on Wednesday. Uh, there should be a standard deviation around that as well. What is that standard deviation? We'll get that as well, okay? So the question is, how do we get all these things if I don't give you the distribution up front? Back to Trevor's question you asked earlier. Where did those probabilities come from? So what I want to do, what I want to do, friends, is I want to go through this one piece at a time. I'm going to start by assuming my flock only has one bird in it. Only has one bird in it. And build up to my flock with four birds. Does that make sense? I, I found it's easier to start by sending Max into the store and grabbing one bird and going home. It's easier to kind of create the distributions from that. And we can tie into old stuff. So let's assume that we just went in. Max just grabbed uh, who would eventually be Bertha. Okay. So here's, here's flock number one. Flock number one. We only get one bird. We only get one bird. Now, I know that we didn't actually do this, mm -hmm. but I want to break it down because Trevor's question about how to get the probabilities is much easier with fewer birds. Even four is not that many. It's not that many, but it is, it is enough to become a challenge. So let's play with this. Let's play with this. We got one bird. Okay. So what I want to do is, what am I really interested in? What am I interested in in my flock of chickens? It's a girl. I want them to be girls because, now some people don't care. It depends on what you want the birds for. We want them for eggs. Roosters are no good to me with, with eggs. A contrary to popular belief, I learned this relatively recently, chickens don't need roosters around to lay eggs. They need roosters around to fertilize the eggs. 
But if you know, all you want is eggs for eating, girls do a great job on their own, just, just lay. So I want to know, I want to know the number of girls in my flock. That's what I want to know. And my flock contains one bird. So how many girls can I have? 50-50, Careful. Oh. What do you mean by 50-50, Jay? You don't mean 50-50. You mean 90-10. But what are the outcomes I can have? Oh, it's either a girl. It's boy. either a boy or it's a girl. Yeah. Is it okay if I call those zero and one? Zero means zero girls, which means I got a rooster. And one means one girl, which means I got that I got I got a pull it. It's a true pull it. Okay. Now the reason I, I jumped on Jada said, what do you mean 50-50? Is because she didn't mean 50-50. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the chance it's a rooster? Trevor, we're getting to your questions now. The question that Trevor had is, how can I figure out within this column without running an Excel simulation? We're about to start doing it. So, friends, what is the chance of getting that rooster? 10%, isn't it? Because if you grab one of those little tiny marshmallow peeps out of the bin and put it in the box and bring it home, according to the guy at the desk, they're 90% girls. So that's just out of that like, population? Yes, but that's what I'm working off of. I'm working off that 90% heat. That's all I got, Jake. The best thing I can do is work off that. In 244, we, we, we test that to see how accurate his 90% claim is. But that's one step at a time. One step at a time. First things first. So, if there's a 10% chance of a rooster, no, zero nine. there's got to be a 90% chance of a girl. Do these sum to 100%? I'm happy with that. You should be too. Happy with that? Fantastic. So, here's a question. On average, on average, how many girls should I have in a flock of one? Just out of that? On average. On average now. So basically what I'm talking about now is we have to think about this from a long term. I send Max in to buy a bird. He buys a bird, brings it home. Somebody else sends their kid in, grabs one bird, brings it home. Somebody else sends one kid in, grabs one bird, brings it home. Somebody else sends one kid in, grabs a bird, brings it home. On average, if I look at how many girls we get from all of those experiments, what should we average? 90. 90% of a girl. 90%, you're right, 90% of a girl. Here's why. Now you can do this a couple different ways. First of all, Haley, how did you do it? I just did it in my head. I did zero times, you know, point 0.1, and then one times point 0.9, and then. So you basically, perfect. This is that beautiful formula that I think, if you don't remember one formula from this class, I think this is the one you should remember. Well, actually, there's two. We haven't gotten to one yet, though. But yeah, basically, it's this times this. Oops, it's in red, if you don't mind plus this times this, which works out to be 90% of a girl. Now that's not, that is not 90% probability. You, you're actually going to have 0.9 girls per one bird. It, I mean, it is a percentage in that 90% of a girl, but what it means is you have 0.9 girls on average per bird. And then you're thinking to yourself, how can you have 0.9 of a girl? It's an average, right? What that means is you've got nine girls per 10 birds, yeah. which hopefully makes perfect sense. The guy himself birds, told me, was what, that's what the guy told me. When he tells me there's a 90% shot of a girl, that means if I look at that entire population in front of me, out of every 10 birds on average, there's a rooster in there and nine girls. So that's out of 10. That's the same ratio as this, isn't it? 0.9 girls out of one bird is the same as nine girls out of 10 birds. Same ratio, same, the same slope, if you will, of, of prediction. The trick is, what makes it random is, you can't just go in there and buy 10 birds and say, okay, I got 10 birds. That means I got a rooster. You might not. You might not have any. You might have more than one. That's the random part of the random variable. That's what I was thinking about. Out of four girls, you might have had two. Yes, exactly. So the girls. question is, thank you, Elena. The question, give me, give me pound, give me pound. The question <laughs> is, how likely is it that we get each of those? Exactly. That's Trevor's question. How do we fill this in? Let's make it more interesting. Is this okay? Yeah. yeah. But nobody goes in and buys one bird. Let's buy two. Let's buy two. So you put... 0.9 girls out of one bird because there's that's, that's the average. On top. That's the average, right? That's the average. Basically, the average, Haley, the average is 0.9. I want to make sure you understand what that 0.9 means because 0.9 here is 90%. 90%. This is 90% of a bird. It's the difference. It goes back to what you, you emphasized so well last week when you said, okay, I, I'm not seeing this versus this. And you were looking at one thing was a probability and one thing was actually a, 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 a contextual thing with a unit. Mm -hmm. This has a unit. It's the average number of girls. Okay. 
not point nine girls. So on average, when you buy one bird, you're going to average point nine girls. So it could so nine out of ten. Nine out of ten, it's exactly. Ten, right? Nine out of, nine girls out of ten birds, exactly. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. That will become as we go through today. It'll become more and more clear. I hope. I, I think, and I hope. I used to go straight to the flock of four. I've learned over time that it makes sense to start with flock number one, two, and three, and then build up to four. Okay. Fair enough? Good. You guys, you guys buying this? All right, let's move over here. Now, Max comes out, and he's brought out Bertha, and he's brought out, uh, is this Nancy? That's Nancy. The Orpington and the Plymouth Bard. Very good layers, by the way. You guys in Central Oregon. Very good layers. If you want a lot of eggs, Orpingtons are good. And they're really friendly. Very, very friendly. Yeah, friendly but friendly a lot of times they want to become mama. I just like, wow. That, oh, you mean broody. Yeah, yeah broody. Broody. But that's okay. Oh, She's been phenomenal. I know, again, data set size one. Take it with the crop size great <laughs> salt. But very friendly. First one, let Max pick her up religiously. Of course, we were holding them from day one, so that could help. Anyway, regardless, let's build the distribution around this. Okay? So now Max has come out with his Happy Meal box. And there are two birds in it, not one, which is twice as much poop. And just so you know, they generate a lot of poop. If you have a garden, that's great. Let it simmer, let, 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 let it cook for a year, and mix it in. Great nitrogen, great nitrogen compost. Okay, flock number two. Flock number two. We're gonna buy two birds. All right, we're still interested in the same thing. We are still interested in the same thing here. We still want, we're still interested in how many girls, at least again, and I'm saying this because I'm interested in how many girls, because I want eggs. I want to get eggs from my, from, my, from my birds. So the girls were not going So I bought two birds. Max went out and picked two birds. How many girls could I have? Two. I could have none. One. I could have one. Oh, two. Or I could have two. Does that make sense? Oh, good. Those are the choices. It's kind of back to Jada's 50-50. Uh, Except it's 30, 30, 33, 33, 33, 33. It's three different things that can happen, right? Yeah. Okay, so now the question is, what is the likelihood of each of these things? Because what I want to do eventually is, I want to figure out on average how many girls I get on this flock. So, you guys pick. Pick any one of these random variables and tell me how we're going to get about figuring out how we're going to, how we're going to work this. What do you think, Elena? Go ahead. So zero, it means it's all of the, like, one, zero point one. Uh-huh. Is it 10% again? Yeah. It can't be. No. Doesn't it have to be less? Yeah. This has to be less. Because think about how hard it is to get a, to get a rooster. It only happens one in ten times. So to get another rooster, it has to be harder to get two Would roosters, doesn't double? it? Yeah, yeah. It has to be. Hell, what are you thinking? Would you double it? Why? Um, that would make it actually bigger, wouldn't it? Oh. Oh. Do right. you mean double? Half. Less half. It's got to be less. The right. question is, yeah. how do we le how do we lessen it? So let let me ask it a different way. I want to throw back to your last project. What do you think, Ryan? What are you thinking? Thinking. You're thinking. Oh, you're thinking. Actually, I'm going to stop talking now. I want you guys to think about this. I'll give you a hint, though. Think of your last project. This is from your last, this is a joint probability. I want them both to be roosters. That means Bertha's a rooster. What word would come next? Yeah. And Nancy's a rooster. Yeah. What does and mean in probability? What does and mean in, think back to your last project. I haven't gotten it back yet, I apologize. It means to multiply probabilities. Yeah. So, if Bertha's a boy, what's the chance just Bertha's a boy? What's the chance just Bertha's a boy? 0. 0.1, 10%, correct? There's a chance that just Bertha's a boy. That's, that, that's just Bertha. What's the chance Nancy's a boy? It's the same, isn't it? It's 0.1 again? So what's the chance they're both boys? Uh, Go careful! Oh, Boy, oh what? One percent, 10% of 10% is 1%. Mm -hmm. Right? It can't be 0 0.2. 0 0.2 is actually 20%. I'd be pissed. It was 1 in 5. You need some damn birds back. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm probably kill the rooster and have soup out of them. But nonetheless, this is, it's got to go down because it's hard to get roosters. It's hard to get roosters. The question is, how does it go down? This is where you have to fall back on your project. Okay, so there's a 10% chance Bertha's a boy, and there's a 10% chance that Nancy's a boy. So the chance they're both boys has to be 10% of 10%. You have to get that unlucky draw both times. 10% of 10% only happens one in 100 times. 
Cool? You guys figure these out. Same logic. Figure those out. Take some time right now and figure it out. I'm going to hit pause on the camera. Give you guys some time to work on that. Figure out what has to